welcome back to my kitchen. Hope you had a nice Christmas and a nice New Year. And um, yeah, I hope you're doing okay. Today we're going to be making something that I don't usually make on this channel, which is a dinner. Today we're making steak pie. I've got a lot of Americans and stuff telling me that chicken pot pie is basically like a dish with the chicken stuff, chicken and sauce or whatever, then pastry just bombed and tap it. That's essentially what a steak pie is here. Unless you get an individual steak pie, then it's like pastry all the way around. Anyway, whatever. Can you stop backing? Thank you. I appreciate that. Sass. This is the kind of steak pie you would eat on Hogmanay or, or New Year, as everyone else calls it. So we're going to make that. It's really simple. It's really plain. There's not that much to it. I suppose if you really wanted to, you could add tons of veg and all that kind of stuff. But we don't. We just have steak, onion, pastry, smashing. So we're going to do that and I'm going to show you how to do it. This is a very simple recipe, but it's a very long recipe because the meat has to cook for maybe three hours, two and a half hours, three and a half hours. So first what we're going to do is we're going to take a bowl and then we're going to add some flour to it. Basically two or three tablespoons of flour. Um, and then we're going to toss our meat in this flour. It's going to help to like thicken um, the gravy that we're going to make. And it's also going to help to Insulate the meat while we're, burnt, we're not burning it, but we're browning it. We're seasoning our flour because we're tossing it in meat, so why wouldn't we season it? That's probably enough. Right. I'm not going to tell you how to measure seasoning because you're your own person and you just season how you like to season stuff. If you don't like seasoned stuff, then don't. If you like honours of salt, put honours of salt in, mate. I'm not your mom. Give that a mix of booty. And we've got 800 grams of diced beef. Um, I'm using lean, but only because I'm about to fry it in butter. <laughs> it really doesn't matter what you use. Uh, you can use the fatty stuff, you can use Aberdeen Angus stuff, you can just use normal beef. Whatever, as long as it's beef. Also, some of you may be thinking, uh, aren't you on maternity leave? Aren't you like not supposed to be making videos just now? I'm pretty sure you told us all that you're not making videos anymore because you're just going to relax and be fat and pregnant. That was the case until Nicola Sturgeon was like, oh here, you can't leave the house. Scotland is on a big lockdown for the full of January. And you're allowed to leave the house to go to the shops, but I'm far too pregnant to go to the shops because it's not worth the risk. So I can't even go to the shops. So I'm essentially stuck in the house at all times. So if I don't make videos, I'm making a mother. So we're making steak pie. All we're doing now is just mixing this flour, run about the beef. So we coat all the wee chunks of beef. Now I am not an expert in any way, shape or form at making like meals, like making, I'm not an expert at making fucking anything. I know that I make mostly cakes and I avoid making savoury videos because everyone, everyone thinks that the way that they do it is the best way to do it. And you could be right, but you could also be wrong. And I, I'm not here for that. <laughs> I just do what's tasty to me. And I'm more so to Marcus because he eats most of it. So I'm not going to make something that's full of crap that he won't eat. Um, so if I'm doing something right now and you're sitting there and you're cringing and you're watching it and you're going, oh my god, what's she doing? That's because me and you are different and that's okay. So please don't come for me and be like, you're doing it wrong. Because I'm not, I'm doing it the way I do it. <laughs> Which might be wrong, but it might be right. Okay, so that's enough tossing of the beef. Next, we're going to cut two onions. Two onion. We're not here for cross-contamination. So we've washed that knife because we poked the raw meat packaging with it. I'm using two large onions. You're boiling it for like two and a half hours. So even if you don't like onion, actually just use it because you won't even know. You won't even know it's there. It's going to boil like a mush. You'll know, no. I swear to God, I promise you. So I cut the ends off. I've got a wee bag here, but I'm going to put my trash in. I cut it in half, peel the onion paper off, also known as the skin. Put it on its 
side, the bit they've cut it, and then I just cut down the way, and then cut along, and then cut down, and then you should have like wee chunks. That's what I do. You cut your onion how you feel. Now you have a big pot of onions, so there's that. Now what we're going to do is we're going to cook these down until they're nice and soft, possibly translucent, and we're going to do that in a ton of butter and some olive oil because we're fat and we're Scottish and we have heart disease. I said olive oil, I'm going to use sunflower oil because I've got hands of it. A big wallop of butter. So now we're just going to put this on the heat and we're going to cook it all down until it's nice and soft and translucent and whatnot. And then, uh, yeah, then we'll add the beef. So let's go for that. Hello. So basically, these are on the heat now. And um, I, we're just going to leave them to chill out and like, do what they're doing. <laughs> just don't burn them. Don't like make them brown. Don't like, if you see it burning, turn the heat down, remove the onions. You just want to make them nice and like, soft. Once they're soft, then we'll add the beef. But I'll show you that anyway. So I'll come back when they're soft. Hello. So now that the onions are nice and soft, we're going to fire in our beef. And all we're really doing at this point is um, basically browning the beef. So you just want to get like a nice brown caramelised colour on the outside of the chunks of beef. Um, and that's it. So to do that, I'm going to turn it up a wee bit. So we'll leave that to do its thing just now. Just leave the beef in there to brown on all the edges. Once that's done, we'll add some more ingredients. And uh, yeah, I'll show you that in a minute anyway. Okay, welcome back. So my beef is browned. Um, and what I'm going to do just now is put in beef stock. So I'm putting in 500 millilitres of beef stock. Which I have here. Okay, so now we've added our stock, we're going to add lean parents or just Worcestershire sauce. Worcestershire sauce? That sauce. This one. The one that I can't pronounce. Um, so we're going to add uh, two tablespoons of that. So a fair amount. We're now going to add one tablespoon of tomato puree. That was sort of one, that was like one and a bit. Next we're going to add one teaspoon of Dijon mustard. We're just going to mix all of that round now until it's like fully combined and then we're going to bring it to the boil. Now, as I said earlier, you can add whatever you want to this really. If you wanted to put carrots and stuff all the way through it and put your veg through it, do that, that's fine. I wouldn't do it right now because you're going to cook it for two and a half hours, but you can absolutely do that. And that's essentially it. So you're bringing this to the boil. Once it starts boiling, you reduce the heat put it on a really low simmer, burn the lid on it, and leave it for two and a half hours. You're essentially leaving it until basically the meat is tender, soft, falls to bits, and the gravy is nice and thick. Stir in that two and a half hours after this boils. You could just burn it in a slow cooker if you really wanted to. Cool, so mine's just now boiling. I'm now gonna put it right down in the hopes that it will sit and simmer. One last stir for good luck. Us. So I will see you in about two and a half hours. Hello, welcome back. So what's happened is I put my stew in a slow cooker because I prefer a slow cooker. Um, written on high for the same amount of time, two and a half hours. It's the exact same idea. It just means that it doesn't stick to my pot. But if you don't have the issue with things sticking to your pots, then just use your pot. I eat my specs, two things. There we go, I can see. Right now, what's going on is my stew is sitting there just chilling out. I put it down to medium heat because the stew is like soft and stuff now. Um, we have carrots on the boil, we have potatoes on the boil. And while I'm here, I'm able to show you how I make my potatoes. So I'm going to do them first because they're done. Basically, my potatoes are done. What I do is I rice my potatoes. It's not that exciting. It's not that important, you don't have to. But I got this ricer for like £3 from Tesco or Asda. Probably Asda. Um, very, very cheap. 
and it just means you get no lumps and everything's nice and smooth and awesome. So basically, I don't use a spoon for that because that's stupid. Cool, I use this one because I can't find a better one. So basically, just boil your potatoes of choice. I'm not going to judge you on what potatoes to use to make mashed potatoes. Stick it in the ricer. And then basically just squish that potato back into the pot you were using. It's really fun to do. It's like, remember when you were a kid and you had Play-Doh and you had that like hair salon thing for the Play-Doh and you could squish the Play-Doh through the wee holes and yeah. That's what it reminds me of. Potatoes are riced. So into my riced potatoes, I'm going to put honey of butter because of course we are. Uh, we're going to put Salt and we're going to put cream. We're not going to put uh, milk in this, we're going to put cream in it because because we are. And then just basically stir it because you don't need to mash it because we've been, we raced it. So we're going to stir all that together until it's all melted and it's lovely. That should be that, and then just taste as you go so that you know if it needs more seasoning, more butter, and if the taste is lovely, just needs more salt. Right, so I'm happy with that. Um, so, this pot is burning, but yeah, that's my mash. Very exciting. I don't like a gloopy mash. I like a sturdy mash. For a few reasons. Uh, one, it holds up to gravy a little bit better. Two, any leftover mash I like to keep in the fridge and then roll in breadcrumbs and make potato croquettes. I couldn't say that there. Um, or like potato cakes or whatever. So I like to have a little bit of substance about it so that I can actually do stuff with it the next day. And uh, yeah, that's just how I make potatoes. Again, I'm not a potato Nazi. I'm not gonna like judge you on how you do your potatoes. Just do your potatoes, man. Or don't do potatoes, do something else. So my best friend Hayley recently told me that Gordon Ramsay once says that there's no need to make your own puff pastry. Um, and I, I agree. So. We're not making puff pastry. Um, in Scotland, there's a company called Bell's Bakers. They make a lot of shit. I'm using their pastry. Mostly because I like it. It seems to be quite doughy. Um, that's not in everyone's, like, not everyone kind of likes a doughy puff pastry, but um, I, my husband really does. He likes to call it a gravy sponge, where you've got, like, the pastry's cooked, but because it's been touching the gravy, it's still a bit kind of, Soft, he likes that. So this pastry's good at that. So all we're gonna do is basically roll it out now. Right, so I've rolled my puff pastry out. And here is my stew mixture. So excuse the mess, but this is what we're looking like. We've got a dead thick glossy gravy and a, yeah, big chunks of meat. Now I've got a second dish here in case it's enough to make two, but I think it might just make the one. Okay, so we have our pie chilling there, and we have our pastry, and then we're going to plonk it on top, but I want to make a bit attempt at trying to make that fit a wee bit better. Right, so I've got my pastry on top of my pie. I lost my balance because I'm pregnant, but that's fine. I'm not going to bother crimping it, but I am going to push it against the edges of the dish that it's in, just to make sure that we don't get tons of leakage. Yeah, any bits that are like a bit too long, I'm just going to fold them back over to make like a wee, don't know, a wee crusty bit, I don't know. I'm just doing it, I just, that's what I'm doing. That's just what I do when I make pies. Again, this is not a tutorial on how to make this pie, this is a tutorial on how I make this pie. We're sitting with something like that. We're going to poke two holes to let steam out, and then we're just going to egg wash it. If you don't know what an egg wash is, it's basically where you take an egg and you wash the pastry with it. You basically like paint it in that. It makes a nice crust and a, a nice colour. We have our egg, it's been smooshed to bits, we've got our brush and we're just going to brush this egg on. So, um, because our pastry is all that's left to be cooked because we know our stew is cooked, um, you're basically following your packaging for your, for your pastry. 
um, because we're people who are not making our own pastry, because um, sack that. So basically follow the instructions. So my pastry, the pastry in question, is telling me to bake at 200 degrees or 220. Um, yeah, 220 degrees, 200 degrees to get a fan oven or gas max 7 until the pastry is golden brown. So that's all it says. Um, so that's the guidelines that we will attempt to follow. But whatever pastry you use, read the instructions, follow those instructions. This is what we have, this is what it's looking like, you probably can't see it, but this is what we have. So we're going to now put this in the oven for as long as it takes to be nice and golden brown. Just keep an eye on it. Um, if your oven's maybe not the best, try and rotate it the stuff to make sure that the golden crust is like even and stuff. Um, but keep in mind your, your stew's cooked, so you're really just cooking pastry. So I'll see you when I see you. Okay, so my pie is out the oven. It's nice and crispy and whatnot, and I've cut right in the middle. But what, what do you want? Do you want like a full half? Or do you want like a quarter? Can I have a thumb? <laughs> what? Uh, Can I have a third day of pie? Isn't that a weird thing to ask? But, so like... I, I think I have too much, I think a quarter's too small, so can I have a third? Okay. <laughs> what? Right, so what half do you want? Like, what, what do you want me to cut in a third for you? This bit. This side, right. What bit do you not want? That side there or this side here? This side here, I don't want it. So cut, cut, from, cut from here. Right. What? It's just that it upsets me. Why is that a weird thing to ask? It just upsets me because it looked so nice and now it's like a wee mad divot it's, for no reason. It's getting eaten. Ah, I suppose. <laughs> right, so apparently as well this is like chicken pot pie in America because it's like just like the lid, it's not like a typical right. full pie then. So I'm just going to separate the pie for the, well, the pastry for the thing so I can actually get it with one big fill scoop. <laughs> Why, why are you laughing at me? I can me? hear you internally getting frustrated. I like that, you know. Do you want some of this stuff on your potatoes or just next to it? Just next to it. Is that enough? <coughs> what? I don't know. I, I feel rage within you. I feel like... I'm not raging. I feel like because I asked for a third of the pie no, that you're going to fucking yell at me as soon as the camera goes out. No. No, that's fine, that'll do it. Right, well, go get your own cutlery and fuck off. <laughs> that, that's basically what we would have for Hogmanay. That is, that is a Scottish steak pie variant of some kind. Enjoy your dinner, son. Thank you. Uh, goodbye. Goodbye. So yeah, this wasn't that exciting. It's just me making dinner. Um, but that is steak pie. That's what we have in Scotland. We buy them everywhere at all times of the year, but mostly at New Year. And um, yeah, I put a thing on Twitter saying do Americans have this? It's the higher discussion. And then I got a lot of DMs and stuff asking to make a video of how I make it. And that that is genuinely how I make it. If you liked watching me make my dinner, <laughs> no, if you liked watching me make like actual like dinners and like savoury foods and stuff, then let me know and I'll make more. Um, if this was entirely boring to you and you thought, why am I watching this, then I'm really sorry. But yeah, this is, this is my dinner. <laughs> it is Burns night soon, so I do have a plan on making one more sort of savoury um, dish. It may or may not have haggis in it, because I know that everyone wants to see haggis things from me, so there's that. But yeah, please comment below, let me know if you want to see me make more like dinners, more like actual savoury meals. So if you like this video, please consider liking and subscribing, because it really, honestly, actually does make a difference. And uh, yeah, I'll see you later. Bye!